Hello, all of you vain, gloriously wonderful people. This is the HBY Dozer, and I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. <laughs> this is the most voted for vehicle this week, coming in with 156 votes. And that fellow off to the left, it's all his fault. He voted for it as he's going to make it rain. Yeah, you better make it rain, buddy. Throwing some comments up on the screen. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing, and of course, commenting. You guys are absolutely awesome. That engagement through the roof. So, uh, the dozer, yeah. Um, not exactly a quick vehicle. Um, Commander Hobo's following me in uh, Habanero, uh, and frankly, he's just kind of coasting most of the time. And then Sven is. On foot, and you can see he's having no problem keeping up. If you look down the corner, uh, bottom corner, bottom left corner, there we go. That was the sentence I was looking for. Uh, you can see on foot he's having no issues whatsoever keeping up with us. Um, in fact, he'll pass me here in a little bit. Um, by now, most vehicles are about a third of the way up the mountain, and <laughs> instead, we're still on the asphalt. Yeah, this is going to take a while. If you haven't guessed by now, um, I, I probably mentioned it in the other video already uh, with the Cerberus. Broke this up into two separate videos today instead of having one longer one. Uh, simply because people are more likely to watch a short video than a longer one. And they're more likely to watch two short ones instead of one long one. So that's why we're broken up into two. This video, if I would have put both of them in the same video, would have been uh, close to 40 minutes long. And that's after I edited everything down. Uh, as you saw in the Cerberus video, I had sped up the footage quite a bit in several different places. Because between these two vehicles that you're seeing today, in two separate videos, if you did watch them both, uh, it was like an hour and 19 minutes before I started speeding up footage. Um... So yeah, I would have had an hour and 19 long video without speeding anything up. As it was, the best I could get it down to is 38 minutes, roughly. Almost 39. So that's why we decided to do uh, a lot of sped up footage. And that we haven't gotten there yet with the dozer. Don't worry, we will. Um, here in about 30 seconds, we'll speed things up. And there is Sven making his appearance uh, for a moment on foot because with the dozer you can indeed walk if not maybe run uh faster than the dozer so he would literally be able to run circles around me right now if he wanted to um npc up ahead on the bicycle moving at probably 10 times the speed that i'm capable of in this dozer commander's actually struggling a bit not to keep up but to keep moving up the hills at such a low speed. There we go. Finally sped things up. And it's going to stay this way till we're almost done. Um, but trust me, we're nowhere, nowhere, nowhere near that. Um, I have to admit, I was rather surprised that the dozer even made it this far. You can see it began to struggle a little bit, but eventually it got over that little obstacle and managed to keep going. I thought right here, though, that it just wouldn't have enough power to, to keep going. But no, even on this rather uh, initial steep bit, just keeps climbing. Where we're going to run into trouble, though, is this first turn. I've mentioned this a lot, but if you wonder why a lot of vehicles struggle here, bring a car up to this section and then get out. Yeah, I ran into some issues going too far to the left and then had to... Try to find my way back up. But bring a car up to that area and then get out and look and you'll see that even though it looks like, as far as the, the image you see on the screen, looks like it's a nice smooth corner. There's actually a bit that kind of over to the right of that turn that where we fell that kind of juts up and makes it difficult for vehicles to get over. Um, I was trying my best at this point to find any route I could back up to the the path that we were on and didn't have much luck so i finally gave up after as you can see several minutes i finally gave up 
decided just to drive all the way back over to the path. I'm gonna skip the initial turn. There's been, like I said, literally running circles around it. I'm gonna skip that initial turn for something a little bit easier, just so I don't have to struggle. We've already proven that the dozer can make it up that, so I don't have to do it again. But then it ran into a little bit of an issue there. It just didn't want to go. It got hung up for what was, you know, 30 seconds or so. Schwinn uh, decided to fire a shot at the hiker just to prove again that people in the game can run faster than Dozer. Um, we're missing out on a lot of the antics that are happening behind us. You can see Commander Hobo just kind of slid off the mountain in his stolen truck. Uh, I, I forget, honestly, what happened there. So we're back to the problem area. And I'm going to try several different approaches here. Decided to try to back up. But the hooks that you would, in real life, connect, like, accessories to, uh, those just get in the way. Did have a hiker on the trail, and since I figured this thing would wind up DNFing, I decided to have some fun. Didn't figure this would actually make it into the video. Since, you know, we don't go fast enough to run over a hiker, I figured I could just smush him with the bucket. But instead, he got away. And I think that this is the first fist fight I've ever gotten into in Bullet Off-Road. Uh, of course... Couldn't lock onto the right person, but we tag teamed him and managed to keep going. So hiker down, even though we didn't run him over. Just a little bit of brutality. Finally, you know, working my way over to that left hand side, trying my best to not slide off. But there you can kind of see that bit that, that sticks up out of the, the pathway that's causing all the problems. And it just causes it to lift the right tread off the ground and so we only get half the traction trying my best to stay far to the left to avoid that while not falling off again and finally finally got around it still going at 500 percent speed though that's that's what we're going at if you wonder why i kept opening the phone uh well we started this at about 7 a.m in game time i don't know if you noticed but it was nearly 5 p.m already in game time as we're right here yeah, this this took a while. It took a very, very, very long time. But you got to admire the dozer. I mean, it's making it. But what's hilarious is that even at 500%, it still looks really, really slow. I mean, doesn't it, though? I mean, when's the last time we've seen this many details? in will it off-road like just the individual rocks and plants and everything normally they just breeze right by even in the really slow vehicles i mean think about it everything that has successfully made it to the top of mount Gilead has long since been up by now i mean the longest is uh just under 11 minutes i think with the phantom and here i am coming up on 25 minutes and we're not at the top yet we're getting there we're about two-thirds of the way up but we're not there yet and we still have, for the dozer anyway, a very, very long way to go. What's really cool is how quick night falls when you've sped everything up 500%. It gets dark really fast. Ran into a bit of a struggle once again. Commander had parked his habanero, but I think uh, he eventually gets back in it because he saw me, yeah, he saw me trying to rock this thing side to side to get it to go up. I think he was afraid I was going to knock his habanero down. So I managed to get it unstuck, and that was just through rocking it back and forth. That, that's all that was. And then I was never confident that the dozer would be able to make this. And again, it's not that I didn't think it would have the power here. It's those hooks in the back. I even tried it in reverse. But those hooks where you would attach some sort of hydraulic accessory to a bulldozer, yeah, those, those are just in the way. And they don't let you get that angle of attack that you need. So I decided to cheat a little bit and see if we couldn't get up here to the very top by the stairs. Because it doesn't count until we're up to that section where the observation deck is. Well, I mean, if it could never get past here, this would be a DNF. Which would be tragic considering it made, this, made it this far. And I don't know. It's not looking good. Couldn't get up there through our normal path. Couldn't get up there on the stairs. Here I managed to get it stuck between two big rocks. I'm gonna try one more approach. Just one last ditch, last ditch effort here. 
Managed to get it stuck, but got it unstuck fairly quick. And then the same thing happened here. Turned off the headlights just because in game it looked like it was really bad glare. But here it just turns out that it's really dark. Yeah. I may try to play with the exposure on this. But look at this thing, though. It's rather steep right here, but look at it climb. And you know what? I never thought that the dozer could do it. But here we are at the top of Mount Chiliad. 34 minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, it'll off-road. Um, though, okay, first of all, if you're ever looking to off-road, I can't imagine that you would find yourself in a situation that the dozer was your choice. Um, and if it is, steal something different. If you're trying to escape somebody off-road, just run on foot. You'll go faster, much faster much faster since this was all Schwinn's fault i did not feel bad about running him over whatsoever i mean i kind of felt a little bit bad because he's a patreon supporter but then again this whole thing both vehicles today are his fault um so and and but when i say his fault i mean he voted for it i, I don't know about the cerberus i think he voted for it in the end to bump it up to be the second place vehicle for the week, but I know he is responsible for the votes that those are received. As well as another vehicle that's coming up uh, in the next few weeks that will also be rather difficult. I know he's responsible for that one as well. But on the Cerberus, that was actually his car. Or his truck, I should say. And that belonged to him, so he's doubly at fault for that one. But Hey, you could join Spins Ranks on our Discord server. Uh, I know he's a moderator there, but he also is is a vainglorious supporter, which gives you access to exclusive supporter channels and occasionally sneak peeks at uh, videos early, especially when I do special edition videos, like the recent uh, Astroneer video where I blew up 1,000 hydrogen containers. Yeah, pretty incredible explosion there. If you haven't seen that, I would recommend you check it out. But uh, all of Inglorious supporters got that video two weeks early. So, yeah, you can head over to Patreon. Link's in the description down below if you'd like to become a supporter of the channel. I never expect it, but I do greatly appreciate it. And right now, it really helps because finances are a bit of a struggle at the moment. But anyways, Shen died a little bit ago, and I'm pretty sure I laughed my head off when it happened in-game. Um, but in a minute, he's going to actually survive his bounty that he had. He got there, right there. He got that bounty literally maybe a minute or two before we found this dozer to steal it. So that tells you how long I have been in this dozer from the time I stole it and drove it from Polito Bay over to here to the mountain and then driving it up the mountain and back down. Thankfully, gravity is on our side with the dozer. And it doesn't take nearly as long to get this thing back down the hill as it did to go back up. Schwinn went flying by on his um, motorcycle because he was going to go get his cargo bob to see if he couldn't lift this thing all the way back to the top of Mount Chiliad. Because there was no way I was spending another half hour or 45 minutes driving it back up like I do most vehicles for the damage descent. But the control descent went mostly without issue. Aside from, you know, the hilarity of watching Spin die. Um, of course, Commander Hobo doesn't have the speed to do one of his normal high-speed entries because he's been following me, but he'll he'll do something here. We're down 9 minutes, 13 seconds. Yeah, he, he just bailed. So I edited my Will It Off-Road off -road death match. Placed a couple dozers up at the top. And we are now on our way down. Sven is in a stolen Dominator, which we will get a very brief glimpse at in just a moment. Oh, we're beginning, they're beginning the damage descent. Finally. There goes Sven. And say goodbye to Sven because, yes, kaboom. Such a lovely thing. At the end, once we finally got down and I had finished recording everything, um, you can see I have two kills in the deathmatch. They were both still sitting in their car after I take the still photos that you're going to see at the end. And I kind of sucker punched them essentially by killing them both while they were just sitting there unarmed in their cars. 
Uh, so I thought, you know, we'd liven up the damage descent, because, you know, obviously there's still like five more minutes left in this video. It takes a while to get down. Um, so I thought I'd give you a death match to watch as well in the bottom left-hand corner. Because uh, after I killed them, you know, of course, they had to get their revenge. And we wound up spending the rest of the time in this death match just blasting each other. It was a lot of fun. And definitely very needed. Uh, because this damage descent was actually the last thing I recorded. I did the ascent and the control descent. Then I did everything for the Cerberus. And then I went and edited the deathmatch, and then this was the last thing we recorded for the day. So this was at the end of like an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes of us uh, taking care of the lit off road stuff. So it was definitely a, uh, a much needed change for what we had been up to. And in fact, in the bottom left, you can see the dozer sitting there where I left it parked. Of course, Finn has the advantage of uh, keyboard aim. Um, and whereas I'm on a controller, so, you know, he gets a few more kills. Plus, he managed to just, you know, get me with the pistol that time, because I'm a terrible shot. Actually, I'm going to blame the gun. Yeah, totally the gun's fault. But hey, the dozer is, uh, doing all right on the damage descent. You know, it doesn't get a lot of speed, so it's just kind of a matter of, you know, driving down. I don't know where Commander Hobo is at this point. I think he got completely stuck. Um, and tried to go down the foot and died. So I think at this point, he's actually back down on the ground. Uh, pretty sure that's the case. Uh, I, I, I think that we see him. Yeah, he's in a Seminole at this point. Yeah, there's Spin coming back up. Because when you die in this match, you respawn all the way back down where the little off-road starts. Instead of where it finishes. So, yeah, is this the first time that we've had a hiker killed um, with the accessory on a vehicle? And is this the first time that there's been a deathmatch in World Off-Road? I think the answer to both of those uh, questions is yes. There's Commander showing up in his Seminole. Of course, he got out of my way with plenty of time because I'm not moving very fast. So there you can see I got shot and ran over deathmatch at the same time. About a minute and a half remaining in the deathmatch. So that lets you know about how long is remaining on the damage to sit here. And though, to be honest, this thing hasn't really suffered much damage. I was kind of hoping it would have blown up on the first drop, but no such luck. I have to drive the damn thing all the way down the mountain. But at least it's good off in, in really rough terrain. Those tracks do help a lot. So, you know, it, it's it's slow, but it's it's not really struggling all that often. So once we got past the you know the first few initial falls, it did fine. I had to remember to lower the scoop to go through all the tunnels. That was about it. I mean, there's a couple scratches maybe on the dozer, and I think that's about all. I, I really don't think that there's any other damage. I don't see any broken windows. Nothing's misaligned. Uh, it looks pretty good. You do wind up struggling, if I remember. I don't know why these two are having such a hard time. But I think, yeah, it struggles just a little bit here to get up this bit of the climb. I think mainly because I was going at an angle. I think if I had taken it straight, it would have been better. Because you can see it's wanting to slide to the right. But finally, finally found that grip. And we're down onto the asphalt. And, you know, in an hour or two, we'll get to the highway. No, actually, we're there. I finished second place. The damage is spent. Finished four minutes, 47 seconds. So let's take a look at the damage. There are some minor paint scratches, and my entire afternoon was killed. And we'll take a look at the cars that Bosch Finn and Commander Hobo had stolen from NPCs. Not so much for the damage descent as it was just their bad driving. But hey, there we go. Both of those done. And there's the scores from the death match. I hope you enjoyed today's little bit off-road. And don't forget to go vote for the vehicles you want to see featured in upcoming Willet Off-Road videos by clicking on the link in the description down below. And until next time, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.